Up first, our amazing moderator, an award-winning content creator who uses her social media presence to center books by black authors. Everybody say hello to Robin Reyes, AKA sometimes Robin Rees. She bad, she bad. Up next, we have indie contemporary romance novelist, Natasha Bishop. Then we have hopeless romantic who knows how to pin love stories, A.E. Valdez. And lastly, we have novelist, educator, life coach, and author of her very first traditionally published Curvy Girl Summer, my girl Danielle Allen. author's journey is different. What made you guys decide to go indie versus traditional? We'll start with you, Natasha. You closest. Oh <laughs> this was a mistake. Um, <laughs> I feel like, honestly, I didn't know anything about traditional publishing mm -hmm. when I started. I was like, how do we do that? And I learned about querying. I said, oh, no. <laughs> We're just going to do indie. And you have so much more control over your stuff, your covers, and it's a lot of work because you're doing it all by yourself, but it's so worth it like to see the project from start to finish for me. Same, same reasons? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Mine are the same reasons. I like just exploring my creativity to its full extent with no bounds, no restraints. That's my favorite thing about being an indie author, and it just gave me so much more freedom, I feel like, not to say that traditional published authors don't have freedom, but indie authors are in a whole different game a whole nother realm it was 2013 and i was like oh i wrote a book what now and google said amazon would allow you to publish it <laughs> and so that's what i did i didn't go through any i didn't even look to see how to query or anything i was just like oh here's how you do it this one's for danielle um now what made you start curvy girl summer off like that like, it was just chaos and confusion, but like, really sexy. Like, what, what were you thinking? I wish I was surprised though, but like, why would you do that? So, in, in traditional media, whether it's books or movies or TV, you don't really see plus size black women being the heroine, being the romantic lead. And so I wanted to make sure I let you know that this book is not that. And um, so that was the first reason. Second is I wanted to set the stage for who Aaliyah is. And Aaliyah is single by choice. And I wanted to show that she is not only desirable, she was desired. And because it's a slow burn and she was looking for someone who was gonna earn her, you were going to have to wait until she found that person in order to have the action happen again. But I wanted you to see that tipping point where she was like, okay, you know what, I'm not, this is not the life for me. I need to look for my, my main man, my, my number one. And so I felt like, you know, if you're in that situation, it's like sometimes you take, that situation will take you there and it'll make you be like, you know what, let me stop, let me reflect, let me, let me do dating right because this ain't it. Thank you. This one's for my girl Amanda. 
when it comes to a worthy love, I think your your heroine Marissa got a lot of backlash, and I don't know why, because she's one of my favorite heroines. Um, I think she's one of the most refreshing FMCs I've read. But oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you anticipate some of the criticism regarding Marissa? No, the <laughs> sorry, the criticism that I got was not anticipated. It was like so far removed from what I was expecting. And I think um, when the more realistic a character is, especially a female character, the more backlash they receive. And I think it's because it just hits a little too close to home for some people. Or they may envy something in that character that they see or you know that they wish they could do. And so the criticism that I received around Marissa, I felt was a lot of projecting it wasn't necessarily like she's a bad person she's just a woman who's strong in who she is she's happy with who she is and no one's gonna shake her foundation oh, a part of why I feel like people had a problem with Marissa was how firm she was in her sexuality she didn't really stand down from it and Danielle and Natasha, you guys write FMCs like that too. And I just want to know, is it hard to write a character where you know she's more sexually liberated than what's socially acceptable? When, uh, <laughs> when I've noticed that when a, when a female character is more sexually liberated, she is ran through the pole, she is tore down everything. But when the male main character is sexually liberated, there is no backlash. It is expected and accepted. And there is no like exception for women. So when a woman is sexually liberated, it's like, well, why is she like that? She's disgusting. She doesn't deserve the male main character. But there's no discourse around the male character. A lot of the times, the the MMCs have to do the bare minimum to get acceptance from readers, and that is because um, we, as as women, see ourselves in these characters. And so, when you see something about yourself that you may not like, um, or you think people judge you for, you project that onto your FMC. So the the men they can screw up the whole book, and by the end, they just throw you a simple sorry, and they're like, "Ooh, yes." I love that man, but, but the women, you never forgive her, even long after the book is done, so. This one's for you, Natasha. Only for the Week has been a crowd favorite since its release, but besides Rome, because you know, he is book boyfriend heaven, but the girls love him. Um, why do you think readers loved Only for the Week so much? Only for the week, I think it was like unexpected because it was a short vacation, spicy book. But at the same time, it dealt with so many heavy issues like familial issues, these toxic relationships within your family that I think, especially as black people, we all have dealt with that um, and the trauma that comes with that. So dealing with those and the open-ended ending that Janelle has with her sister and her mom, it wasn't tied up in a bow. Um, it was very, true to life and so I think people appreciated I've, I've had a lot of people message me who were like I had a similar relationship with my mom or my sister and like this made me feel good about the fact that I cut them off or I did this and that so I, I feel like it's that that personal um, trauma in there <laughs> so in my opinion and probably everyone here in the audience you guys are successful authors but is there ever a time where you experience imposter syndrome? And if so, has that affected your creativity? Is there ever a time we don't <laughs> experience that? I think if you're, I don't I won't speak for you guys, but every time I write, there's always a period of time where I'm like, this is trash. <laughs> Nobody's gonna read this, but you just have to push through it. I think I have it every single day all the time, but I just do it anyway. <laughs> do it scared. Yeah, that's how I feel about it too. I experience imposter syndrome. I literally think everything is horrible until it's actually like out. 
in the, yeah, it's working against me. <laughs> Until it's like actually out for people to read and then I'm like, okay, this is good. But I would not put out something that's not good. <laughs> so I'm always pleasantly surprised every time I put something out and people receive it well. I'm just like, good. They got it the way I intended it. Now, girl, but why I, would you be surprised? Well, I'm just like, well, I write it and I feel good about it. Like, so I don't feel like I have imposter syndrome. I feel like I'm writing and I'm like, this is good. I hope other people feel the same way. Yes. And so I, I'm just like very sold on it for me. And then when other people like it too, I'm like, okay, we're here. Like we, you got it. But if they, if someone doesn't, then I'm like, oh, they missed, they, they didn't get it. I, but I'm still, I'm still good with it though. As long as I'm alive, y'all always gonna have a fan, okay? Y'all gonna have at least one fan. As long as I got breath in this body, I'm here for y'all. So another question I have is, social media is a very important aspect of being an indie author. It's how you get your books out there. It's how you connect with other authors. Do you think that that has impacted your connection with readers? Um, yes, absolutely. I think that, I think that this mic is against me. Um, <laughs> I think that, okay, I'll use yours. Um, but I think that social media has given me an opportunity to create a community that I wouldn't have been able to create without social media. And I think that social media gives a way to connect with readers that we're not able to because of time, distance, however you want to say it. But yeah, I've created an amazing community and that would not have happened without social media, even though it's very hard for me to post. <laughs> I'm still there, I'll answer DMs and stuff. <laughs> and I think social media has also given indie authors like us a, a platform to get ourselves more out there to readers than we would have had before. You know, we didn't, when we started, we didn't have money to run ads. Um, and things like that and so things like TikTok and Instagram allowed us to reach y'all and connect with y'all on a, on a deeper level that works better than ads I think ever could. So I agree with all that but I also think that social media allows you to be able to showcase your personality as well and so readers are able to like see you and be like oh I like you I want to support you like regardless of what the synopsis is of the next book they still want to like oh I want to I want to support that person because I like that person. All right, Danielle, this one's for you. So, Carby Girl Summer was your first traditionally published book. Congrats again. Um, did you find the writing process for this book was different from your indie books? No, not at all. And I feel like because Bramble was is such a blessing, I was able to write the book I wanted to write. I didn't have to change anything about who I am in order to have them want the book. And so that was greatly appreciated because I know that's not everybody's experience. And um, the, the only thing that was different is that the, the deadlines, because when it's indie, it's like whatever the deadline I say it is. And then now it's like, you need to get this done by this time. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm on it. Okay, so Amanda and Natasha, throughout this year, we've seen a handful of our favorite indie authors have their first books um, for traditionally published. Is that something you guys want in the future for you? Maybe eventually, right now, it's not in my sights. I feel like as an indie author, I already have so much on my plate, and I'm happy. And that's the main goal, is like, I'm happy, I'm putting out work that I love, and the readers love it, and that's all I could ask for. Um, for me, I am pursuing it. Um, have some things. <laughs> so I definitely am pursuing it, but for me, I would never want to not be indie. Um, so for me, it would have to be hybrid. I could never be 100% trad just because Indy has my heart. It got my heart too, girl. <laughs> okay, so now that I have you all up here and it's, you can see it, I feel like indie authors are the backbone of black romance. Like, the black romance genre would be nothing without indie authors. Y'all are carrying that on y'all back and I hope y'all got some kind of medical. Um, but I also noticed there's a sisterhood amongst you guys. 
I've noticed authors are very quick to jump in and share resources and promote books. Um, do you feel like that has shaped your career or how has the support of your fellow indie authors shaped your career? It's been vital. It has been like, there has been things that I've needed to know the answer to, especially um, whether it's like just things that I don't know and there's so much to learn and then you're never going to know it all and there's always people willing to like be like, oh, like I'll answer that for you. I'll be there for you. I had this like curvy girl confessions where these two lovely ladies were guests on it where it's like, I'm like, hey, I need, I need help. Like I need somebody to interview. And then, um, and I had so many people willing to, to be interviewed, including this young lady and this young lady. And so like, it was, it was so, so you can feel the support and it's so lovely to be in that environment, to have so many people that are there for you and rooting for you. And I just, I love it. And I think a lot of this industry is based in competition, which for me doesn't make any sense. Because uh, if you think about it, a, a reader could read 200 books a year. How many books are we putting out a year? <laughs> there's no need for, there's room for everybody to eat. And so having that community of authors who help you when you're stuck on something and even push you to be better. I know the authors that I've become friends with, like these two, and this one sitting up front, A.L. Seegers, who came all this way. <laughs> um, just having them around has pushed me to be even a better writer. They've improved my, my writing, um, and so the community is essential. Oh, oh you got I, now. I got two mics now. <laughs> um, yeah, without my community of authors, I don't think I would be. I, I'm very quiet, so they check in on me. They make sure that I'm doing good. <laughs> they tell me to do things that are hard. Even to come here, I was like, Natasha's like, you're going. And Robin just texted me. She's like, you're going to Essence Fest. I was like, all right, we're going to Essence Fest. <laughs> so without these people, I wouldn't be who I am today. So. Say about AE is that she is so quiet and so private. She didn't even say her husband and children's names to us for the longest time. She would just say, my husband, my kids. We were like, and they are? <laughs> Yeah, like it was one time she said her son's name, and we was like, who is that? And she was like, oh, that's my son. I'm like, how was he supposed to know that? I'm sitting there like, you got kids? She's like, oh, yeah, and a husband. How did I know that? She's like so introverted, but it's in a funny way. Okay, but each one of you guys' books, your whole catalog, they're quite spicy. They're, they're, they're very sexy. Does that make Thanksgiving dinner awkward? Like, did your family was like, I read chapter 13. Um, what was that about? <laughs> my family doesn't talk to me about it. Like, I told my mom, like, read the book. She was like, where, what chapter should I skip? I was like, well, for Career Girl Summer, chapter one. But, like, for all the rest of them, it's just, like, read it. We could talk about the... We could talk about the... We can talk about the story and the plot, <laughs> but not the spice. My, my mom doesn't read my book. She read the first one and she was like, and that was so nice, but that was enough. <laughs> and then the rest of my family, the rule is you can read them, but don't ever talk to me about it. <laughs> We're good. Thank you so much for supporting. My bank account appreciates it, but don't talk to me. Uh, my, uh, yeah, my brother actually texted me and said that he read my book and was like, where did you learn all that from? I was like, that's none of your business. <laughs> none of your business. Did you like it? Yeah. Okay, then that's all you need. What more do you need? If you enjoy the book, then that's it. The spice is just spice, just seasoning. <laughs> what is something that you want readers to know? about being an indie author? Like, is this the, it's one thing that you want them to understand? Because I know as readers, sometimes we are, not when I weed, but they are very just like not understanding. You drop a book, next week they're like, okay, we're part two. You're like, wait a minute, I don't even know what part two is. So is there something specific you would want readers to know? Okay, 
Um, I think that the most important thing is like we are human. There is a person behind the account, behind the book, behind all of that. And just to have compassion, understanding, empathy, because sometimes I understand and appreciate the excitement, but at the same time, it's a lot. Especially as an indie author, we are doing everything ourselves. So just support and understanding. That's what I was gonna say. We are doing it all. Like we are financing it all. We are outside of just writing the book. We're doing every other step ourselves, and a lot of times by ourselves. So be patient with us. Um, just to trust us, because you know when you're reading a romance that you're gonna get that happily ever after. That's guaranteed for y'all. But everything else, their journey to get there is not guaranteed. We're gonna get you there the way the characters tell us that you have to, but just trust us to get you there. I know we might make you suffer sometimes, but we got you in the end. Now y'all know us indie black romance authors. Every other day I get on social media and somebody's like, oh my God, it's so hard to find black romance that's not rooted in trauma. Um, so black love is revolutionary. And I know sometimes it's very hard to be, to see those criticisms and it's like, nah, girl, I'm right here. Like, what's going on? Um, so my thing is, how do you feel about being that pillar to show that black love is real, that it exists, um, and that it deserves to have the same care that you would with a, with a white romance or an interracial romance? Um, I feel like it, it's, it, black love is just black love. I mean, my husband is sitting right over there. He is my emotional support, my everything. And I feel like my books are an affirmation and a declaration of black love. And I'm always going to shout that from the rooftops. And if you can't find it, you will eventually find me and you will fall in love too. I feel like anyone who is saying they're having a hard time finding it isn't looking for it. And so I feel like um, writing and putting out all the things that we put out, all of the books that we put out that celebrate black love, it, it's there. And uh, those who want it, like it's there for them. And so. Like uh, we're just writing to amplify black love because we're all in it. We all appreciate it. We, we don't write for the people hoping that they're gonna find us and appreciate and educate you why you should care about our love. We're writing for the people who already appreciate it. So if, you, if you're here for it, you're here for it. Now I know you're not supposed to have a favorite. You're supposed to love them all the same. But if there's someone in the audience that has not read any of your books, what's the one book you want them to pick or you think they should pick up? Okay, okay. Um, so the most, the most popular book that I've written is A Worthy Love, but my personal favorite is Colliding With Fate. That one is so near and dear to my heart. That one is just literally my soul on pages. So that is the one that I recommend every single time. For me, my most popular is Only For The Week, but my personal favorite would probably be Where We Found Our Passion. Uh, <laughs> Tori knows I um, I I poured a lot into that into that book and so that would be the one I recommend. I can't pick a favorite and I was trying to stall. I was hoping y'all were gonna say the same thing, but y'all picked one, so now I'm just like, oh, if I well, I mean Bramble sent me here, so Curvy Girl Summer is 100% what I would like for you all to pick up, but. Indie wise, I, I love them all. Like it, it's a little something for everybody, depending on what continuum is. I, I love continuum, but also like if there's Poe inspired one, there's just so many. There's a lot to choose from, guys. So they're out there, but I can't pick one I'm, except for Curvy Girl Summer. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all which one to stay away from. You know, your first Danielle Eller book. If you see Broken Clocks, run the other way. Don't open it, don't do nothing. Because if you open that book, that, 
that if that's the first book that you read from Danielle Allen, you are never gonna pick up another one of her books. She had me snot running down my nose, crying, boo-hoo. Like, I had an eye infection and my eye was swollen shut, but I was still crying. Like, I was like, how could she do this to me? I didn't even know her at the time. I was like, I need to find her Instagram. I need to cuss her out. I need to tell her about herself because why would she put this book out here in the streets for people to read and to cry over? It, it still haunts me. It, it still, and it makes me mad because it's a beautifully written love story, but it made me cry, which isn't too hard because I'm a crybaby, but still, like, you, you owe me some money or something. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> but we're going to uh, wrap up, but y'all know I can't get out of here without being nosy. I got to put on for my girls. Do you have anything public coming out this year? Any more projects that we should be on the lookout? Anything we should be sliding in your DMs bothering you about? I can be security in your DMs, though, so if it gets too crazy, just call me. But, like, what can we expect from you guys this year? So, so there's a homecoming situation happening in the fall. Um, I can't say. There, I'll be able to announce more in August. And then, thank you. And then <laughs> Nina um, will be getting a story early 2025. I'm working on that. Okay, um, I am working on my second series, Three Kings Billionaires, so North King will be getting a book eventually. <laughs> eventually. This year, if all goes well, okay, I am trying. I am click clacking away on the keyboard, y'all. <laughs> I'm working on the other friends in the Only for the Week um, series, so all of those friends are getting books. I don't know when, y'all. I'm trying my best. I'm just a girl. Am I going to have to deal with Arnold again? You already gave him that name, and now I got to read a book about him? That is an old man name. And, and, and he had the nerve to just, just be how he was. But he's trash as his name. And I'm so sorry for any Arnolds. <laughs> and my dad's name with is relative. Arnold. And, uh, oh, oh, my bad. Oops. I'm sure your dad is a very I, lovely Arnold's person. Arnold's so you know? amazing. <laughs> hey Arnold was one of my favorite shows. <laughs> hey Arnold is a great show. So we're wrapping up, but I just want to take the time to give each one of you guys your flowers. The way that you write black love, the way that you write black women, the way that you connect with your, your readers, your personalities. Um, you give us something to strive for. You give us something to support. And like I said all, earlier, we always get the readers who's like, well, you can't find black love. Oh, my God. Um, and every single time they come with that, I can just slap one of y'all books down on the table and be like, here, since you begging so much. Um, so I just want to tell y'all I'm grateful to be in this space with you guys. I'm happy that I've come across you over the years that I've been here. Um, you guys have been so welcoming, so supportive. And when I slid into each one of your DMs about doing Essence Fest, yeah, I was like, yeah, like there's not a question about it. Um, and I just want to say thank you because without y'all, I wouldn't have this space. I wouldn't have this trajectory. I wouldn't have a platform to even talk about anything because you guys give me the material. Boy, do you give me the material. <laughs> And so I just, I want to give you guys your flowers because I know it's very hard, and especially as an indie author, you don't get, you don't have a team behind you. You are your team. And sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle and readers kind of forget that y'all are people. So I'm here to tell y'all, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for giving me something to read when I be on my sad girl island. Y'all know girl be struggling, but y'all give me something to read, something to look forward to. And I'm just so happy and so blessed that I was able to have this space with you guys, have this conversation. And I'm just wishing you guys the very best in your careers and the rest of the year. Thank you so much.
two, 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 two. 